guys welcome to Mallorca part two so this uh, video covers days four and five of the trip and there's some amazing footage on this video here we are leaving the hotel Alcina or hostel Alcina as it actually was in Calabrac Jada and this trip uh, this video covers days four and five so we're on our way early in the morning it didn't take long for trouble to strike because as soon as we got off this pavement here and we turned the corner one of the lads got a puncture uh, and it was actually Tom here on the yellow scoop. So um, he got a flat tire on his front wheel, literally within about 10 yards of leaving the, uh, the premises. I'm guessing there must have been something on the ground, maybe some thorns or thistles or something. Um, I don't know, some broken glass maybe. Um, but something's gone through his tire. So here they are all trying to mend it with limited tools. You've got Tony down there uh, trying to get the wheel off. The plan was to get the wheel off, go and get it fixed at a local garage and put it back on. Um, so the easiest thing to do was just to try and take it off on site, but there were limited tools. But eventually we got him going and um, thanks to uh, Alan and Tony there sorting him out. Now, we're on our way to Alcudia, okay? So we've been on the road for a few miles and I seem to remember that Tom's tyre, that front tyre, had been filled with air as a temporary measure to try and get into uh, a garage and it wasn't long before it was flat again so we had to pull over here at this garage and I think we were at this garage for a good hour maybe hour and a half maybe even longer than that but we sat around waiting in the sun eventually Tom did get the wheel fixed um, uh, with the help of a couple of the other lads who stayed behind with him and then we were back on the road so we're on our way to Alcudia and I think on this particular day there was a football match on um, and I think a few of the lads were keen to get to the hotel so they could watch the football. doesn't interest me at all, but, um, you know, for them it was important. So we were working against the clock here. We are trying to get to Alcudia, and um, it was a great ride. This was a great ride. Later on in the video, you will see uh, that tomorrow we go for um, the trip to the Cap Four Mentor Lighthouse, which was absolutely stunning. So that is the best part of this video, and you'll see that coming up. It's absolutely breathtaking. Um, but here we are, we're headed over towards Alcudia. Okay, so who can we see? We've got Alan there, a.k.a. Yorkie, because he's from Yorkshire, of course. Uh, I think we've got Nelly there coming through in the, in the, the um, on the Black Scamaddy. And um, there he is again. You can see that the roads here, even these main roads, these kind of um, A roads, very, very smooth, very well maintained, and very scenic as well, you know. Um... Just absolutely stunning landscape to ride through on a, on a beautiful sunny day. And look at the sky, just amazing. Um, now you can see there I'm undercutting people, right? I'm cutting people up a little bit just to try and get different angles on the camera, different footage. And a few of the lads have pulled me up for this. They've kind of mentioned that I'm a little bit dangerous. And um, obviously in my mind I'm completely safe because I'm aware that I'm doing it. But of course I'm not giving them a chance to see me in the rear view mirror, so a little bit naughty. And um, I am more aware of it now after, you know, having a chat about it. But you could, did you see the car there just zooming down the outside? There were a couple of um, cars that were very, very dangerous, just overtaking, very impatient with us. And um, they just wanted to get past on these fast roads. And I suppose, you know, you can't blame them. We're having a great time, but they're probably trying to get to work and do normal daily stuff, you know. So we're heading now into uh, Alcudia and... There was some sort of triathlon on on the on the island um, during this time that we were there, and when we got to Alcudia, there were some road closures to allow the cyclists um, to come through on their route, and we got diverted round the back of the town to the hotel onto this kind of dirt track here. This dirt track went on for um, probably a couple of miles, and it was absolutely dusty as anything. You could barely see in front of you. Eventually, we get to the end of it, and we arrive at the um, the hotel. And this is the Apartments Siesta in Alcudia. Big hotel, nicely equipped, and um, we're pulling up now. And we had a great evening. There's a view from the, uh, the hotel room. There's the pool. So, um, great hotel. You know, another one of Alan's successes, just finding these great accommodations. Having a little sleep there by the pool. And we went out for a curry in the evening. Few of us had a curry, few of us went for uh, tapas, so different things going on in the evening. And now we're into day five. 
So I think from memory this was about 10 a.m., 10.30 a.m. We're leaving the hotel and we're on our way to the Cat Before Mentor Lighthouse. And this was an absolutely stunning ride, guys. Stay tuned for this. Uh, absolutely brilliant. So you can see I'm leaving the hotel there with the camera, which is rear-facing at the moment. And I did have a little trauma with the camera on this trip, and I'm going to explain that in a few minutes. Uh, I tried to turn the camera around and had a few problems, um, but I'll come to that in a, f in a few minutes. We're pulling up here at this junction. The plan was to ride um, avoiding the main roads, right, like the dual carriageways and the big A roads. Um, but we kind of got lost here. I think the sat-nav took us the wrong way. We ended up coming onto this junction, and we're just debating which way to go. Uh, and I think the plan was just to try and get back onto the smaller roads, onto the, the country lanes, where it's a little bit more fun and a little bit more scenic. So we're holding the traffic up, a little bit naughty. Um, you know, and you've got to remember, we're on holiday, but like I said before, other people are um, going about the daily business. And I suppose 20 scooters isn't um, always the best thing when they're trying to get to uh, wherever they're going. So you can see the water at the side of us there, absolutely magical. Um, I think it was like the kind of estuary uh, along the coast into the sea. Um, but yeah, now you can see we're starting to climb the hill. So this is where the ride starts to get a little bit interesting. It starts to get more dramatic, very scenic. And um, these roads are just great to ride. You know, you've got a sea view um, normally on, on the right hand side there. But it changes as, you, as you're riding along. You've got bends, you've got hills. Uh, you've got a lot of cyclists as well. Um, as I said, there was some sort of big competition. I think it was a triathlon of some kind. But there's a lot of cyclists uh, that you'll see. And um, just look at that backdrop there. Absolutely amazing with the bay. The bay in the background. Uh, crystal clear water. And um, very, very steep gradient here. We're heading uphill all the time, as you can see. Fantastic. Coming into shot there is Gaz with his chicken strapped to his Lambretta. Not sure what uh, happened to the chicken. I think he lost it later on in the trip. Um, there's Simon. So, let me tell you briefly what happened with the camera, right? Um, just before I do that, just to mention as well, this whole ride, this whole day was filmed. I've had to try and just edit it down and chop out a lot of footage, but um, you will get a full kind of idea of the ride. Um, I've tried to include all, you know, the, the, some of the best bits. It was hard to sift through all the footage. But let me tell you what happened here. We're coming in here to the first kind of viewing point on the ride. Don't stop here. We go. This, this is the end. Bit of confusion there as to whether we're stopping or not. Paul's saying don't stop here. But uh, a few of the lads did want to stop. So um, pulled in here. You can see that the camera is rear facing. Now we stopped for a brew and a, you know, a, a, a drink of water or whatever. And I turned the camera around, and while I was still setting the camera up, the lads um, hit the road. And they kind of left me a little bit, not knowing that I was messing around with the camera, but I got left behind. And I was about five or six cars behind the main group, heading over towards the lighthouse for the first few miles. And the camera wasn't turned on, I was panicking, I was trying to get the camera on. Uh, and I was trying to ride at the same time, and I was also trying to catch up with the main group. So it was a little bit precarious. Uh, when we set off again eventually i managed to hit the right button on the camera as i was riding along and um, got the camera working so um i probably missed about half of the ride to the lighthouse from this point onwards but here we are i've eventually got the camera working now and um caught the best bits here of the, of the, the ride there but the good news is that i got all of the footage on the way back from the lighthouse which i've edited down again uh, you know, it's quite a long journey, but I've just edited it down to the main bits. So enjoy this, guys. I would even say that this whole week was probably the best scooting experience I've ever had uh, during the uh, the three years that I've been on the scooter. Absolutely fantastic. Look at that road. Look at that view. It was even better in the flesh, you know. I think you had to be there to, to kind of fully appreciate it. Um, but it was very, very dramatic. Um, absolutely amazing. It's a shame about the uh, the wind noise there on the camera, on the microphone being picked up. Wow. You, 
can hear me there just saying, wow, at the breathtaking scenery. It was absolutely amazing. You know, it's hard to describe. And you can see there on the right, on the uh, on the headland there, is the Cap Formentor Lighthouse. And that is where we are heading right now. Um, so not long to go now. We're nearly there. So as you approach the um, the lighthouse, you get to like the last half mile, there's a real problem with the traffic congestion, as you can see. And uh, we were kind of waiting in line and then we got fed up. We ended up just following these bikers and, and kind of, uh, you know, um, filtering around all the traffic. Uh, a little bit naughty, probably to the annoyance of the motorists, but it had to be done because we were just wasting the day, otherwise just sat in the traffic. And that's one of the advantages, of course, of being on two wheels. So here we are, we're at the top, we're at the summit, and we managed to park up and uh, find a space where luckily we managed to get all the scoots lined up in one line for our customary photo. And there it is, what a great photo that is. Guys, that was absolutely incredible. What an exhilarating ride up to the top of this lighthouse. And um, just incredible, right, breathtaking. I'm gonna flip the camera around so you can see the view from the lighthouse here. Absolutely awesome. It's a little bit windy as you would expect. I don't think it gets any better than this for riding a scoop. Absolutely amazing. What an experience. Just before we set off on the ride home, time for another iconic photograph at the base of the lighthouse. And then we're off. So we're leaving the lighthouse and uh, although I did film the whole ride back, I have edited it down again just so it's not too uh, too long. Now, coming up here, check out the guy just by the side of the camper here. He's fist bumping or high-fiving every one of us as we drive past. But he was a strong guy, nearly ripped our arms out. So uh, a little bit weird, but he loved it. The reaction you get from people abroad is the same as it is in the UK. They love to see a group of scooters. It's just incredible. You get such good feedback. And uh, here we go. Winding our way down the road.
lady on the bike there is the lady that took the photograph of us on the steps. And uh, her and a, a fella, they kind of followed us down the hill. Um, so thanks to her for the photo. Just look at that and you're right there, that bay down there, the beach, it was just idyllic, idyllic. hanging back there just letting the lads pass me so that I'm kind of towards the rear and I think there's a tunnel coming up here we actually go through the mountain here and of course like uh, the schoolboys that we have we had to beep our horns as we go through the tunnel which is customary of course Eventually, as you come down and you descend, you come down to this kind of more wooded green area where you know it's a bit lusher and um, it's not quite as barren, but um, equally pretty and spectacular. And I think it was around here that Paul decided that it was a good idea to pull in and maybe have a group photo. Um, maybe not the best idea in stopping in the middle of the road. And I think we kind of abandoned it because it was just a, it wasn't a good location really. Um, and now we're passing back through the, uh, the kind of viewing point. Uh, en route to the, um, the lighthouse. This is where we stopped on the way up where I, I messed up the camera. So we're heading back down and um, just an absolutely amazing ride. It was spectacular. It really was. So the plan was to come back down to the town of Palenza and um, maybe stop for a beer and a little bit of tapas or something and um, pretty straightforward on the surface but as with all things uh, with our scooter group it's never straightforward because when we got there we did stop for a beer and it was beautiful and um, you'll see here we're pulling into the town now and it is a little bit like a ghost town you know that kind of wild west feeling again everyone was having a siesta and we ride into town which felt great. Um, and we found the square we parked up and um, found the central square 
where there's some lovely bars and, and cafes and stuff. And um, we sat and had a beer, but then of course, disaster struck yet again. Stay tuned for a minute or two and you will see what happened. Just sat in the sun there in the square in Palenza enjoying a beer after a hard day's ride. So unfortunately Al, I think it was Al from memory uh, who'd organised the trip, he had a fuel leak and what had happened is the mounting uh, bolt that, hold, that holds the fuel tank had actually pierced into the fuel tank and there was fuel pouring out. So um, Tony's doing his best there trying to fix it, trying to kind of seal the gap with a little bit of, uh, of rubber and um, cardboard just to kind of make a makeshift um, repair until he could get it back. Uh, we weren't far from the hotel either, only a few miles from the hotel, but I think what we did in the end was just call Loco Wheels and out they came and replaced it. So... Um, Brilliant service from Local Wheels, you can't knock it. It was an amazing trip, and guys, I do have lots of footage of the final day, which will be posted in a separate video, part three, Mallorca part three, that's coming up in the next few weeks. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment below, and um, thanks for watching if you've got this far. Cheers.